was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are back with round four from the Sealed Volk Tour over in Poland. Don't forget, rounds one, two, and three are linked in the description, so you can check that out if you like. And do not forget to check out the lovely folks from Crazy Killing Machine. Steve and Carl, I can vouch for them personally as people. They are wonderful, lovely people. They are content creators from the UK. They are taking their time and effort and getting themselves out to stream these tournaments. They are wonderful dudes. And make sure that you follow them on Twitter. No, I don't know if they even have a Twitter. But make sure you are checking out their YouTube. Make sure you are checking out their Twitch. That is rather important to me. Okay, so looks like, ladies and gentlemen, we are off and rolling. Cool. So, what have we got? It looks like Nick is going to go first. We've got James Aronson with Athlete Hogan and Nick with the Macabre Firewalker. Well, that's just going... That might be one of my favorite names I've ever seen. I like names that just... Like, I've got... um. I won a deck in a Facebook competition, which is literally called The Unfriendly Companion. That's a second turn one Igor we've seen on stream today. Remember, when you start the game, when you go first, you start with seven cards. So you play one, you got six in hand. You don't draw at the end of your turn. Unless you mulligan, you end with five, you draw one. It's why mulliganing going first doesn't really matter anywhere near as much. Because you don't actually ever lose a card, really. Whereas here now, he's got seven cards in hand, and that is a lot of Brobnar in hand. Neek has got a big hand full of Brobnar cards. He could be doing some good stuff. So Merkins goes down, plays a standardized testing, gets rid of Igor, plays life for a life just for the Amber bonus, and then plays a Yancey gang, get himself a creature down, and he is off. Cool. So, what are we going to do now? So, we've got Phyla the Researcher. When you play a creature next to it, you draw a card. Down goes Halperbot, draw a card. Now, of course, during his turn, he is allowed to play a non-Logos card because he has played the Halperbot. So, that's kind of interesting and cool and fun and lovely. And he chooses to play a Foozle, I want to say. That's the one whereby if a creature has been destroyed this turn, you get to gain an extra amber when you reap. And it's not destroyed by fighting, it's just destroyed. So there is Archimedes going down. And yeah, we're on a, we're on a Logos turn, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a Jar Goggle. Put a card under it. And then you essentially get it back later. We'll have to see what that card was. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out before too long. And, I mean, there's not much amber rolling around here. We've literally got one amber for each player. We're a couple turns in at this stage. Uh, the other card played down there was Dysania. Your opponent discards each of their archived cards, and you gain one amber for each card discarded in this way. Not the best time to play it when your opponent doesn't have an archive. So Life Web comes down, gets extra amber because his opponent played three creatures on the previous turn. Then plays Persistence Hunting to exhaust all of those Logos creatures. And seems like uh, Neek is going to end the turn with four amber and a couple of creatures out. And that's awkward. Now as it happens, doesn't look like James actually has much Logos in his hand at all. So, that's a Sucker Punch. Get an Amber, deal two damage. Ooh, chooses to go up. Now, what he could have done there... Now, Throwing Stars comes down. Okay, now we see. Now, Throwing Stars does take down the Helper Bot and the file of the Researcher. Now, Sucker Punch has got Alpha, but if you destroy a creature with it, you get to archive it. So, there was an argument there to take down the Helper Bot or the Filer with Sucker Punch, so that you could archive it, but he's also seen and gone, you know what, Foozle can actually be really awkward in terms of my opponent gaining extra amber, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna not archive my Sucker Punch, so that I can get more damage down on the Foozle. I don't think that's a terrible idea, if I'm honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think that's a terrible idea at all. So, we are now back, and... I mean, he's not on check, is James? James is sitting there on four amber, and I believe Neek is there on four amber? 
Free Amber. Cinema on Free Amber. You can actually see it on the hand cam. You can't actually see it was blocking it on the main cam. Shout out to Crazy Killing Machine for the hand cams, incidentally. They are great. Oh, he is destroying every undamaged creature. Now, he is going to gain some chains, but he's destroying every undamaged creature. Now, remember, the card under Jog... Is he not? Now, remember, the creatures either side of Archimedes do get archived. I think that's what he's doing. He certainly he's pulled out the chain tracker. Seems to be the seems to be the play going on here. We'll have to wait for them to, to fully resolve it. But that seems to be what we're seeing. Coward's End. Destroy each undamaged creature. Gain free chains. It certainly looks like he's playing a Coward's End. Now. Oh. Now that was the interesting ruling there. Jar Goggle. If it gets destroyed during your turn. During your opponent's turn. You archive the card under it. But it isn't destroyed. It's archived. So it went to the discard pile. And then, of course, Foozle Can Reap gets the two amber. That's why we saw James really going after it before. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Grump Buggy. We've got a Grump Buggy like my daughter when I won't give her what she wants. It's a Grump Buggy. Your opponent's keys cost plus one for each friendly creature with power five or higher. So the keys are already costing plus one because Foozle is a five power creature. Although Drummonaut coming down as a six power creature means now that Nyx... Oh my goodness, that Grump Buggy has backfired. Because now James has played down three creatures. Essentially, everybody's keys cost one more for the other player's creatures of power five or higher. Drummonaut, six. Colf the Quiet, six. Lollop the Titanic, six. All of a sudden, Neek's keys are now costing nine rather than six. Whereas James' keys are costing seven rather than six. So at the moment, as it stands... That Grump Buggy is doing a lot more harm to Neek than it is to James. It's always awkward playing a Grump Buggy. Now, if you're playing against, say, a, a Shadows Dis Logo deck, Logos deck, you can be fairly sure that you're probably going to be all right. Whereas if you're playing against a Brobnar deck, it's awkward. Has he just played a second Coward's End? He actually has. He's just got to play the second Coward's End to get rid of all of his opponent's creatures. So now his keys don't cost more to forge. And he's now up to like the four chains, five chains. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> now Nick has also ended the turn on check, which is... um. Kind of an interesting one. E. Jertson. E. J. Lutz. I'm sorry, I can't quite see your name in the chat. Go, Neek is a good friend of yours. As it stands, Neek's doing pretty well. It is going all right. So like I've said, oh, and we've had some cheers. Neo Recon 19 cheered 10 bits. Thank you very much. So, James here is, is looking pretty good. got a nice you know he's got himself out uh he's got a merkins he's got a ronnie wrist clocks he's got himself a yancey gang he's got himself an umbra he's also stolen a couple of amber using that ronnie wrist clocks which means neek is no longer forging next turn now we do get some damage there just taking down the umbra umbra when it fights it steals an amber and it's got skirmish so it's not one you really want to do and of course now a creature has been destroyed foozle's getting two amber from reaping and a second foozle goes down neek's got a game plan here neek is kind of loving this and remember because of that grunt buggy foozle is a five power creature james was going to be able to forge at seven but that second foozle means his keys now cost eight and he's only got seven amber, so there will be no forging. And it looks like he's actually using Ronnie wrist clocks to take down that first foozle. <laughs> Unfortunately, slightly late. He, he's not forged a key. He missed the opportunity. Now, I called that Merkins a minute ago. Yes, that is Merkins. So... Unfortunately, unable to stop Neek forging a key. Neek will forge his first key. 
And that that's a little bit awkward, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, you know, that grump buggy absolutely coming out. I'll be honest with you. When the grump buggy came down initially, and then James played all of those creatures. Well, I, I said it on the stream. I wasn't embarrassed about it. It seemed to be backfiring. No longer. Save the pack is taking out the damaged creatures. Oh, Flaxia comes down. He's got more creatures, so he gains a couple of amber for playing it down. That's kind of cool. And then just drawing up. He's forged a key. He's got two amber. He's got a couple of creatures out. It's not doing bad. Now, unfortunately, James has also forged, and actually has more amber already, but he doesn't have the um, setup. Oh, Dysania comes down. You cannot archive when your opponent's got a Dysania in their deck. Cannot do it. Jargoggle comes down again, and a pip pip. Any creature that reaps will be stunned. Now, that's actually really interesting, because, of course, we've seen Neek really rely on reaping with Foozle to get the extra amber. So, the fact that now it can't do that, I mean, you can always use a Flaxia to take out the Pit Pit, but they aren't in the same house. And that's a, a slight bit of an issue, ladies and gentlemen. That, that they aren't in the same house. So, what are you going to do? Yeah. Got to have another card that takes it out instead. Now, if he can take out the Pit Pit and then double reap with Foozle, that would be amazing. But it's going to be um, slightly more awkward, shall we say. <laughs> Just a little more awkward. So, oh, playing the Tremor. That is going to stun. Stuns a creature in each of its neighbors. When your opponent's got three creatures out, that's good. Bingle Bang Bang comes down. Oh, Fuzzle is going to reap, but that's going to stun it. Is it not? Oh, no, because he took down Pip Pip. Sorry, I'm being an idiot. Already took down the Pip Pips, and not only did it not get stunned, it gets a double amber as well. That is amazing. That is a good shout. That is a very good shout. I mean, it seems like Neek has basically played this entire game with Grump Bucky and Foozle. I've got on a pemp seed down now, which is quite lovely. But that is... um. Yeah, this is this is good, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. Now, people are saying in the chat that he might have forgotten to actually take the amber from the upgrade there, which is a slight problem. But as of all of these things, it can be quite difficult. And it's actually incredibly relevant. He's only got five amber. So if he did forget to take the amber, that, that's going to be a slight bit of a problem. Oof. That is bad, ladies and gentlemen. That is bad. Yeah, and people are saying he did forget to take the amber. That's, um, that's actually incredibly relevant. I'm going to try and tell someone... See if we can get this resolved. Of course, the problem is that that might affect the way that James plays out his turn. Because if he knew his opponent was on check, he might have gone for some kind of stealing action. Oh, and it looks... Oh! So he's actually played an Earthbind. So he played Merkins. A Merkins basically... No. No, Merkins got destroyed. Sorry, I'm being an idiot. Okay, so Earthbind's been discarded. And James is sitting there. He's got Snecklifter out. And he's got the Dysania out. He's got the Jargoggle out. For Flaxia and Bingle Bang Bang. The Foozle is finally gone. That Foozle has been causing issues today, ladies and gentlemen. That Foozle has been causing a lot of issues. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we've got a Grove Keeper and a Witch of the Wilds down now. So we just saw a little bit of Reap in there to gain some Amber. 
And Neek, it looks like, yeah, the end of his turn. Grovekeeper gives a plus one power counter to each of its neighbours. And Neek ends on check. But not taking the amber for the upgrade could end up really coming back to hurt him. Could really hurt him. So, down goes a cow fine. Kind of like the anti, the opposite bingle bang bang. Into the fray. Choose a Bobnar creature for the rest of the turn. It gains fight ready this creature. But there's no one ready, so we can't actually really do much with that, unfortunately. <laughs> Doesn't actually gain him any kind of advantage. Oh, except for Relentless Assault, which readies and fights of up to three different creatures. Now that makes sense. So having played the Into the Fray on Calfine, it's now got that skill that when it fights, it's readied. And now Relentless Assault readies it and lets it fight. Remembering that before it fights, it does two damage to each neighbor of the creature it fights. So it's fighting the Grove Keeper, takes down the Grove Keeper while doing two damage each to Flaxia and Witch of the Wilds. And now, in theory, it's now going to fight Flaxia, taking down the Bingle Bang Bang. Oh no, it's actually Jog Goggle that takes down the Bingle Bang Bang. And then it looks like... Now, those plus one power counters are going to get kind of awkward. But it looks like James is just going for a tactic here of... I'm just going to clear your board. Just going to go ahead and clear your board. That will be fine. Okay. Go for it. Again, I, I was expecting him to go with a cow find there and just kind of keep fighting and... Doing the extra damage. I mean, if there's only two creatures on board, you don't get that extra two damage from Calfine. So is that just choosing to kind of to leave the creatures be? Wants to wants to keep Calfine out for for the future, which I don't blame him. You know, if a if a one or two power creature comes down that's particularly awkward, you can take them out immediately with Calfine by fighting either of the neighbors. So you know, that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, and I've just got word back from, from the table judges, unfortunately. And again, I went through the floor rules yesterday. I did a video on it. Check that one out on my channel. It goes down as a missed opportunity. Neither player saw it. It's too late to correct it. So both players just go, okay, and just crack on. Now, annoyingly, that grump buggy is actually stopping Neek forging a key right now. He's got the six amber he needs, but Calfine is five power or above. Which means that Grump Buggy is stopping him forging a key. And what's very interesting here is that he has no five power creatures. So that is not going to be stopping James forging a key. That Grump Buggy, I mean, that Grump Buggy's done some good. But it's also been extremely awkward throughout today. Grump Buggy's one of those weird ones. It is, it's a very two-sided card. It can really help or it can really hinder... And I feel like Neek has, has it's hindered him a little bit in this game. I don't necessarily think he's got the full value. And I also think that it's kind of hurt him. You know, he would have just forged a key if it wasn't for the grump buggy. Of course, oh no, I'm lying to you because James has also got a grump buggy down. The other thing to remember is that if a grump buggy hadn't been down for so long, players might have been playing very differently. Okay, so we see a 1-2 punch taking out the Dysania there. Play the Wild Wormhole, get an Amber, play the top card of your deck. Where else are we going here? And we just see James looking at his deck discard. Oh, Mimicry comes down. That lets you choose any card in your opponent's discard pile, any action card, and basically use it. You get to make it a copy of any card in your opponent's discard pile. But again, we, he's gained an amber. I don't really know what he's done. <laughs> Sorry. It's one of those you've got to try and figure it out from context. What would be awesome is if the players kind of played a mimicry and then picked up the card and played it, but you can't have it all. 
So Bouncing Death Quark comes out here, taking down the Flaxia and the Calfine. You can destroy an enemy creature and a friendly creature as often as you like, but you've got or as much as you like, but it's got to be both. You can't destroy an enemy creature without a friendly. Now also gets down a Pip Pip here. Creatures are stunned when they reap. But there's nothing that I don't believe that's actually going to stop the forging a key. So it looks like James is just going to be forging his second key here to begin his turn. Now Joggoggle is taking down Pip Pip. Taking down Witch of the Wilds. I'm confused as to why he hasn't forged a key. Oh, which of the worlds? Yeah, there was extra power counters. Okay, there were extra power counters, I believe, that put them above a six power creature. Okay, that's kind of nice. <laughs> so, plays down another Jar Goggle. And got a Titan Mechanic not on a flank. And he's got an Archimedes. And now he's ending his turn with plenty. Now, it's going to cost seven Amber to forge here because of the Titan Mechanic. But it does mean that Neek is able to forge a key. And all right. So the Grunt Buggy is working. The Grunt Buggy is very much working here. Question is, what else has he got? What else has he got? Because at the moment, Neek's not got any kind of board state. Now, he is ahead two keys to one. But there's nothing, like nothing out at the moment literally nothing so what he needs to do is get himself some creatures down get something rolling because otherwise this, this game's going to end because james is going to forge more keys right so we do get a glimmer going down lets him get any card back from his discard pile and he's got a lot to choose and he's played glimmer at almost a perfect time now chooses to go for a life web that gives you extra amber if your opponent played three creatures on their previous turn which he did so there goes one amber for playing it and two amber because his opponent played three creatures. That's lovely. It's a good start. And bearing in mind, right, he's got two keys. All he needs really here is to get a bunch of amber and then, then he's going to be rolling. If he can just get a few more amber, he's going to win this game. Now, James has got a memory chip down. Every time he chooses logos now, he's going to have to archive a card. And he has forged his second key. And really now, we're in, a, in a quite a close key forge game. And it just comes down now to who can rush to their third key first. Simple as that. Who can get their third key rolling before their opponent? Now, the memory chip. So he's chosen logos. He has to archive a card. Now down comes Poke. Destroys Glimmer, so it actually gets him to draw a card. Poke is rarely good. But in situations like that, it works quite nicely. He's going to treble reap, and it's like we've seen so many times before. I've got two keys. My opponent isn't about to forge. I'm just going to rush for Amber. He really does need to get on check, though. Now he's got another ar couple of Archimedes. He's got what looks like a Library of Babel, but... The problem is now, he's not forging next turn, and Neek's got the opportunity to forge. Now, remember that Titan Mechanic is still making Neek's keys cost plus one, because there are two Grump Buckies out. <laughs> but, the question is, can Neek get enough Amber this turn? Can he get himself to a position where he's got enough amber that he's going to win on his next turn? Because James isn't going to win next turn. James has not got game. So really now, it's all about trying to make sure that he's going to forge before his opponent. That's the goal here. So it looks like he's gone logo. He's got a wild wormhole, gets an amber. Plays a... Is that a one-two punch? It's to get another amber. And... Gonna go after the Titan Mechanic. So now he's on to check. So that was the first job. Now it looks like he's on a lab work there as well. 
which is going to get him an amber and allow him to archive a card. So that's also, I mean, I love just archiving cards because then you've essentially got one more card draw drawing at the end of your turn. So I was going to say, if you archive Colf the Quiet there, you can always grab it on your next Brobnar turn, but you're now drawing one more card at the end of your turn. Now he has going to put a Logos upgrade onto the Jar Goggle. He's discarding Binate Rupture. Remember, Binate Rupture is an alpha card. So, because he didn't play it at the beginning of his turn, it doesn't actually do anything now. So, it has to just be discarded. Each player gains Amber equal to the Amber in their pool, but it's an alpha card. So, you lost the opportunity. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, now we are seeing James really get going with the Amber here. And yeah, he's archiving a card. And now just, I mean, he's just passing the turn. His opponent's got six Amber, but that Titan mechanic is stopping him forging a key because of the Grump Buggy. And he's passed with eight Amber. So he's he's fine. He's now got enough to forge. So now it's over to Neek. And now Neek's in that awkward position we see so often at the end of games where Neek has got to try and stop his opponent forging while getting himself on to check. Because if all you ever do is just get Amber away from your opponent, sooner or later you're going to fail. But you can't just gain Amber yourself because then your opponent's already in a position to forge. So he plays a wild wormhole, gets an Amber, pops a Pip-Pip down. Logos is not known for their ability to stop your opponent forging a key. Effervescent Principle would be amazing. You've got to think the Wild Wormhole here was his attempt to find something that would make a difference. Plays Bouncing Death Quark to get rid of Titan Mechanic. So now his keys just cost six. But he still needs to get rid of free Amber from his opponent or play some big creatures. So he plays Standardized Testing, which literally gets rid of everyone. But really just archives them. <laughs> oh, but he... None of this is stopping James winning the game next turn. That's the problem here. The problem is James has eight amber and two keys. So has Neek got anything? Because in Age of Ascension, Logos is not known for this. FFS and Printable would be great. Cuffrope Research would get James down to six, but he's got nothing, ladies and gentlemen. James forges his first key, neat third key. Neat concedes, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how this game ends. Lots of grump buggy and annoyingness and... Oh, Neek had a key charge. He was searching for it. How cool would it have been if he'd have hit key charge off Wild Wormhole for the win? That would have been a great, great ending. But it wasn't to be, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't to be. Alrighty then, so, if you're on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and consider supporting on the Patreon at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. Yeah, I know that's not the same, sorry. But it is PTCG Radio for the, I don't want to make a second Patreon yet. Uh, yeah, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, Wossy Plays.